Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This is part two of a three-part series showing the alterations to the U.S. temperature record being made by government agencies. In part one, I showed how government temperature graphs have changed over time. Twenty years ago, NASA showed that the United States had cooled from the 1930s through the end of the 20th century, but now they show warming during that same time period. This is essentially the same data set which they were using in 1999, but what's happened is that NOAA and NASA are altering the temperature data. By altering the data, they turn cooling into warming. Let's look now at what the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, is doing to the data. This is NOAA's current temperature graph for the United States from 1895 through the present. This graph is supposed to represent the average of minimum and maximum daily temperatures around the United States, which they average out monthly before they release their data set. As you can see, it shows a strong warming trend, particularly over the past 50 years. The data which NOAA uses to create this graph is publicly available. It's almost entirely based on a data set known as the United States Historical Climatology Network. NOAA publishes three monthly data sets. The first one is known as RAW, which is the actual measured data. The second one is called Time of Observation Bias, and the third one is the final data set, which has been heavily adjusted by NOAA. This graph from NOAA is based on the final adjusted data set. I download that data set from the NOAA website all the time, and I'm able to reproduce their graph. This is my graph and it shows the average of all of the monthly final adjusted temperatures for every year going back to 1895. My graph looks almost exactly the same as the NOAA graph. The software I use to generate this graph is software which I wrote. It's all open source and there's lots and lots of people around the world using it and verifying it. And as I mentioned, this graph looks very similar to the NOAA graph indicating that the software is working correctly. Now let's look at the NOAA graph for only maximum temperatures and not including the nighttime minimum temperatures. The NOAA graph also shows a lot of warming over the past 50 years. And this is my version of that same graph, which looks very similar to the NOAA version. But now let's look at the raw data set, which is the actual measured temperature data which came off of the thermometers. NOAA doesn't publish a graph for the actual measured temperature data, and it's pretty easy to see why. The United States has cooled a lot over the past 90 years, and that doesn't suit their agenda. In fact, the average afternoon temperature in the United States last year was the lowest on record. The average afternoon temperature in the United States during 2019 was 63 degrees, which was 5 degrees cooler than 1934. That doesn't work very well for global warming propaganda. And if that news isn't bad enough for climate alarmists, the first nine months of this year have had the smallest percentage of days above 65 degrees Fahrenheit on record. The actual measured data does not support the idea that the United States is getting hotter, and this is very problematic for global warming alarmists because the vast majority of high-quality data around the world is from the United States. Now let's look at the unadjusted average temperature around the United States. That's the average of minimum and maximum temperatures. Once again, you can see that the 1930s was warmer than the present. Not surprisingly, the unadjusted data looks very similar to the 1999 version of NASA U.S. temperatures. Let's take a look at that again. The 1999 NASA graph showed cooling from the 1930s through the end of the 20th century. And the current unadjusted NOAA temperature data for the United States shows the same thing, cooling from the 1930s through the end of the 20th century. This side-by-side -side image shows the NASA 1999 temperatures on the left and the version which I generated using my software on the right. The graph on the right is generated using the current raw unadjusted NOAA temperature data. The similarity between these two graphs shows that the NASA 1999 version of U.S. temperatures was a pretty accurate representation of the raw, unadjusted temperature data. The NASA data is based almost entirely on the NOAA data set, and it's pretty clear that NOAA is altering the data. Let's take a look now at those alterations. This graph shows the temperature difference between the NOAA final and the NOAA raw temperature data sets. Remember that the final data set is their altered data and the raw data set is their actual measured temperature data. 
You can see that the NOAA temperature alterations cool the past by about one degree Fahrenheit and they warm the present by about an equal amount. So NOAA has created about two degrees of warming in the United States since the year 1960 simply by altering the measured data. That graph looked pretty suspicious, but this graph is the real smoking gun that something very wrong is going on. This graph once again plots the final minus raw temperature adjustment on the y-axis, but across the x-axis, instead of time, I'm plotting atmospheric carbon dioxide. You can see that there's almost a perfect correlation between the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the amount of data tampering which NOAA is doing. In fact, the correlation is so good it has an R squared of 0.981, which is an extremely good correlation. So it's pretty clear that NOAA is altering the data to match their theory, which is the exact opposite of how science is supposed to work. The proper way to do science is to look at the data and adjust your theory to match the data, not the other way around. It's pretty difficult to justify the concept that the United States is hotter now than it was during the 1930s, because if we look at the National Climate Assessment, they show that heat waves were much worse during the 1930s. And here's a similar graph which I generated from the NOAA daily temperature data, showing the percent of days above 95 degrees Fahrenheit at all United States Historical Climatology Network stations. You can see that hot weather was much more common in the United States prior to 60 years ago, which is very similar to the graph from the National Climate Assessment. The adjustments which NOAA is making to the U.S. temperature data to create these graphs, which they present to the public, are simply not credible. In my next video, I'm going to look in more detail at those adjustments. In the meantime, please visit Toto and Kyrie on the web at realclimatescience.com. They've been pulling back the curtain on junk science and fake temperature data for a long time.